Yeah. Wolfgang Van Halen, uh, Mammoth WVH, the WVH in WVH. Uh, good to talk to you, Wolfie. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I have seen you once in Australia, um, and it was only in Sydney a yeah. long, long time ago. Very long uh, time ago. I've, not, I've, I've noticed a, a lot of uh, WVH tour dates. I'm not seeing any Australia yet. I'm sure uh, that will be rectified in the not-too-distant future. That is that is my priority on this album cycle to at least make it over there at least once do a, a pan Pacific you know Australia New Zealand Japan sort of thing I so badly want to come over there and it's the one place we haven't yet yeah well you know that one time you were down here that was uh, that was a pretty interesting one in Sydney that was uh, that yeah. was such a big uh, show wasn't it uh, I think that, that weekend we had Aerosmith on it had Billy Joel on it it was just absolutely massive it was quite the crazy like festival like it was a, a small festival but it was huge like small in terms of how many people were playing it it was it was a it was a really crazy thing it was fun was that your first time in Australia uh no I had been to Australia as a child uh going over there with my dad uh, and my mom, I remember I spent an Easter in Australia as a kid at one point. Um, but uh, no, uh, in terms of touring, man, I, I, it was just that one uh, show with Van Halen. So I very much would love to go back uh, finally with Mammoth and finally get get over there. Yeah, and that uh, tour with Gary Sharon, that was the only tour with Van yeah. Halen down here. That one in Sydney only went to Sydney. It didn't go to the rest of the country. It's up to you, young man. It's up to you to bring your name down here. I, I will do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another celebration at the end of the world, the first single off the album. And uh, quite a funny video, uh, you know, <laughs> where you break up the band. Uh, and, and the irony being you are the band. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's important not to take yourself too seriously. So we had a lot of fun uh, with that video. And the next one... Uh, for the for the for the song when when the album drops uh very much follows as a as a part two to that video so it's going to be very fun i'm excited oh, i look forward <laughs> to that is is it true in america do the do the barman actually slide the drinks down the bar is that something that happens in every bar <laughs> they do, in they do i've never seen that in australia they, they do in music videos <laughs> 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 yeah um uh, th there's been a couple of songs that we've uh heard from this album for those who haven't heard the uh, full album yet uh like a pastime and also take a bow uh have uh, previewed the album as well um and you've been performing those songs live uh you know when you get up there and you're performing songs from an album that hasn't been released yet how is the audience handling that it, it's crazy uh i'm very nervous playing playing the new songs for the first time but uh they've turned out to be some of the most exciting songs uh during our shows the audiences have been very receptive to them so i'm very excited to get out there with the rest of the album and start playing all all of the songs sure so how do you structure the songs and uh, decide that these are the three that we're going to go with before the album uh i think uh to kind of show what the album is capable of while, while also not giving away everything i think another celebration was a great uh, intro kind of showing the direction that the album is going that it's gonna still be melodic but but maybe have a bit more uh aggression and heaviness to it and i think also take a bow and like a pastime both showed uh maybe a bit more maturity in the songwriting uh contents prior uh compared to the to the first albums just to show that sort of evolution uh and then leave a lot of fun surprises on the whole album for for people to discover once it's once it's out I, uh, yesterday I played the entire first album followed by the entire second album and it's it, it's a nice passing of the torch yeah yeah it really it, it's it reflects on what made the first album good and retains what the band is but I think it really takes it to another level and sort of I think Mammoth 2 is the perfect title because it really is sort of a sequel slash uh, evolution to everything that was established with the first hmm. and it's great hearing uh, rock music too um you know, like there's so much pop in the charts uh, these days because of that, you know, ridiculous way the streaming formula works for the charts, uh, you know, effectively blocking out anything with a guitar from a, a top 40 hit these days. Um, but, uh, you know, like the structure of setting up, you know, both the one album with the three tracks that came before that, now the, uh, the two album with the three tracks that came before that, there's still a single structure, isn't it? Even though you create an album as a body of work. 
Yeah, I mean, in terms of the way the albums are created, uh, it's it's all just me in the studio playing and writing everything other than, uh, you know, my my producer, Elvis Basquette and engineer uh, uh, Jeff uh, and Josh, our assistant, uh, really between the four of us, that's uh, you make a mammoth album with just the four of us. Uh, so the it, I think we were just kind of hungry for that that next step and, and, and trying to see what we could accomplish after we've already established what we had with the first album. There's a track on the album, uh, well, it actually uh, ends the album, Better Than You, uh, which I've seen described as Beatlesque. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the in the studio, we, we would call it Mushoga Beatles because it was uh, simultaneously super heavy, but having this sort of uh, that descending Beatles-esque uh, uh, bridge and ending, it kind of really tied it all together. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you do have sort of a Beatlesque crossover in the... Uh, the 64th Grammy Awards, um, when Distance was nominated uh, for Best Rock Song up against a Paul McCartney song, Find My Way. And you both lost to that bastard, Dave Grohl. <laughs> I just think uh, taking away from that to, uh, be in a, to be treated as an equal in a category about songwriting, I think that was enough of a win for me uh, to take that home and uh, to be... Uh, Grammy nominated alongside uh, people I've looked up to my whole life from from Weezer to Foo Fighters to the Beatles uh, an absolutely ridiculous honor uh, I would never have expe expected that would have, would happen <laughs> yeah. was McCartney in the room that day uh, he was not but I, I did get to be near him I was way too way too uh, scared to introduce myself to him but I did I saw him I was close um, at the Taylor Hawkins show at uh, at Wembley. Because I would imagine that, you know, in your lifetime, you would have had, uh, you know, very famous people, even babysitting for you, I would imagine. So <laughs> getting nervous at meeting someone, I'm, I'm surprised to hear you say oh, that. Oh, uh, when it's a Beatle, you know, uh, that's that's a that's a whole other level of, of that's, you know, music royalty. <laughs> yeah. So it's, that's a different thing for sure. And I guess, uh, you know, those comparisons with Mammoth and uh, Foo Fighters, because you in the studio by yourself playing every instrument, uh, draws comparisons to that very first Foo Fighters album, which was all Dave Grohl. Exactly. Dave was uh, one of my main influences when when wanting to do that, seeing that he did that gave me the uh, the desire to try it myself, knowing that I could play uh, all the instruments. It was sort of a, a personal goal uh, and challenge to see if I could be able to to create a cohesive body of work uh, playing everything myself. That's all very well and good until you decide, hmm, want to take this on the road. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you need to find a band. Luckily, uh, I have an incredibly uh, talented and wonderful group of dudes um, out there uh, uh, to play everything live. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, are they actually on the second album? No, the second album is the same thing. You know, I I think at this point, I, I've proven the the entirety of Mammoth, at least from its inception, uh, to be my sort of creative musical outlet expression sort of thing. So I'm actually having, I don't know if I'm ready to let go of that yet. I'm having such a wonderful time tracking everything in the studio. Um, but yeah, for for now, you know, they are my live band. Um, could I see them? Uh, contributing to the recording process at some point in the future. Yeah, I'd, I'd never say never, but for now, I just have way too much fun <laughs> in the studio. So that that evolution of Mammoth into Foo Fighters really is being held back at the moment then? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because I know uh, what the last album uh, Dave played drums on was the second album. So I guess we'll see what happens with the third <laughs> for Mammoth. <laughs> uh, Michael Basquette, uh, Elvis, um, is is that uh, like a 50-50 collaboration between you and he in the studio? He's very much, you know, I think when people hear that I play everything, they're like, well, you got to bounce it off of somebody. Not having a band, it must be creatively bankrupt and uh, to have it just be kind of one vision without it being challenged or tested or anything. And uh, Elvis is very much that other half that I need in order to get everything done. He's a fantastic uh, songwriter and musician in his own right. So lending his ability to, to, to help guide me when I might be too close to the material or uh, just kind of guiding me down the right path or telling me what works and what doesn't work. Uh, he's an integral part to the creative and uh, recording process of what Mammoth is. And you go back quite a ways with him as well. I mean, one of the, the Tremonti album that you, you 
uh, were part of the band for for a time. Yeah, that's that's how I met him. I, I you know I had uh, you know become a fan of his work uh, from seeing what he did with Alter Bridge, uh, and then when I joined uh, with uh, with Tremonti uh, for for uh, the, the time that I did uh, those two albums that we recorded at once um, with Elvis that I really hit it off. And that's when I started showing him my ideas. And then uh, quickly that next year, we got into the studio uh, over here in LA and uh, we really hit it off. And, and that's how Mammoth was born. We started recording early tracks in 2015, uh, January of 2015. So that's how long uh, it's <laughs> Mammoth has really been in the works. <laughs> Tell me about this 5150 studio. I mean, I've only ever seen pictures and read about it, but, uh, you know, in, how, how how incredible is it when you walk in there? Uh, you know, it's funny. It's 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 not so incredible to me because I've grown up in it my whole life. Uh, so it just feels like a rite of passage uh, uh, for it to be where I, I create my music now. It's, it feels like a like my duty to 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 fill it with as much music as possible for the long, as long as I'm alive and that's exactly what I plan on doing uh it just feels like what I need to be doing do you get a sense of um you know Dave stood here or Sammy was there or you know like uh not 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 too much actually because we at this point we've done so much in there now it's remembering where it's like oh yeah I was right here yeah, I was here I mean I can remember certain things where it was like I remember uh watching my dad Al and Mike practice uh, a lot just kind of sitting on the floor and anytime Al would like get up and go to the bathroom or something I'd sit on his kit and mess around with it and stuff like that but other than that really uh, that's all I really uh, you know we're starting to make our memories in there now and it's really special yeah I'm getting in there doing your two albums in there has anyone else used that studio I know friends of uh, of dad like throughout the years um, but uh, no nah, this is very much a private home studio within the Van Halen family. And uh, that, that's that's how it's going to be, I think, for, for the foreseeable future. So now with the uh, the two Mammoth albums and the set list has basically been songs from the first and the three songs that we've been introduced to so far, how will the set list evolve um, after the album has been released? Yeah, I think being a new band uh, as we are um, and going, you know, we just announced some headline dates that I'm very excited about. Um, considering Not in we- Australia. Eventually, absolutely, we will. I can't. I, I can't wait for that. Um, but I think for these headline shows, I think it'll be fair to expect a a, a, a large amount of the new album. So I, I hope everybody likes it. Um, the new songs that we've been playing, people have responded really well to it. So I, I think uh, being able to finally play a full sort of hour and a half of of our music blended with all the new stuff you know i've been working on set lists where there could be like three or four positions where maybe one night we play this song and another night we play that in case that uh certain dates are are very close to each other in, in location and maybe if people go to multiple shows they can experience a different couple songs on another mm. night because i guess you've been restricted too in that you've been doing the festival gigs and uh you know you've got a very limited time slot Exactly. You really need to, to to cater your set. Luckily, we have a, a wide breadth of, you know, heavier and lighter material that depending on where we are, if we're at playing a metal metal festival or something, it's like, okay, let's not do distance, <laughs> you know, but if we are, you know, playing a, a thing where depending on the clientele, all the, all the bands there, it's like you can really hone down your set and know what you should be doing. Uh, and the more albums that we have out, the the more options we have. So I'm very excited to have this new album. Van Halen always did great covers. Um, is that something that you will plan on doing as well uh, when you've got the full set list that you can play around with? It would need to be very special. I know um, over the past uh, few tours, we've only ever done two. We uh, we we covered Them Bones by Alice in Chains. Um, and then when Taylor had passed uh, from the Foo Fighters, we played uh, My Hero uh, in honor of Taylor. Uh, so it would need to be um, a, a special thing that we really believed in, not just doing a cover for cover sakes. I know, I know, my dad grew tired of 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 all the covers, uh, to where he actually said a, a quote that I really resonate with, which is, uh, you know, I'd rather I'd much rather bomb with my own material than succeed with somebody else's. And I think that's one of my main uh, uh, reasons and reasonings behind why I don't play Van Halen at a Mammoth show. You know, I I, I would rather build and or fail uh with my own material than than just kind of soullessly uh cash in on the van halen name sure but uh you know there's a whole lot of 
classic rock out there, you know, Led Zepp or, you know, Nevada. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think if, if, if we felt compelled enough and, and, and worked up something uh, exciting enough, yeah, I, I, I would surely, uh, yeah. I mean, even uh, for example, like I know we're playing Spokane, Washington, and that's where my good friend, Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge is from. So if he felt like getting on stage and maybe we work up a, a an interesting cover of something that would be that, you know, special occasion type thing. Well, yeah, I could imagine the Alice in Chains thing. It'd go down a, a treat in a place like that. That would be pretty badass, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was always a big fan of Hot in Cleveland. Do you watch the reruns? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I loved that show. My mom uh, my mom did such a great job on that. That was a really fun time, getting to go to the the set. And uh, man, Betty White was such a was such a sweet uh, sweetheart. She was wonderful. <laughs> Damn. You you got to meet Betty White. Now I'm envious. Oh yeah, Betty Betty was wonderful. She is a legend, man. She was so sweet. Yeah, yeah. How often did you get to go to the studio and watch it being made? Ah, uh, it it depends uh, on you know what I was doing at the time. I know I you know over the years I visited uh, many many times. Um, in fact, I know my mom has the uh, the that like porch swing that was. Uh, uh on the set she has it at her house and it's now a legit porch swing at her house so like a lot of good memories of sitting on there with uh with betty my mom has so it, it, it's really cool to have that at part of the of her house oh yeah what a great show <laughs> you'll you'll have to bring your mom down too i mean she could come and do interviews with you that'd be fantastic i know she loves uh i, I know that she loves australia i remember <laughs> i remember that last time uh uh, that I was there uh, during the, uh, or not the last time, but the time before that, uh, we were in the airport in Tasmania, and uh, she was crying with a, with a cup of coffee in her hand because it was the best cup of coffee she'd ever had at the airport. She was like, I don't want to go. This is so amazing. And I remember that was on our trip where we where we went through uh, through Sydney and then we went down to to uh, New Zealand and everything. It was a wonderful time. I, I it's it's an absolute priority of mine to to make it over there on this album cycle. Absolutely. So you can you can mark me down on that. Well, you know, like I say, you know, only two times did we ever have Van da- Halen down here. Only once as a national tour, and that was the Gary Sharon lineup. So we never got the Dave, or we never got the Sammy. Sammy's been down here once. Dave's been down here once. It is your duty, Wolf. My duty. <laughs> Bring Absolutely. the name back down. Oh yeah, I will. I, I plan on. I plan on doing it as much as possible. <laughs> Good to hear, and great to talk to you. Uh, loving the two albums, uh, Mammoth I, One and so Mammoth much. Two. Uh, good to hear. Have you here at Noise11.com? Thank you so much for having me, man. Pleasure. Please hang up and try again. 